Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome to another edition of Inside Arsenal, a match day edition of Inside Arsenal. And what a match it is ahead of us all later on this afternoon in North London. Arsenal versus Manchester City, last season's top two. Probably the two favourites for the title once again this season, going head to head for the first time in the league, of course. Since the start of the new campaign, Arsenal did get one over Manchester City in the summer in the Community Shield in, Wen in at Wembley, winning that penalty shootout to win that, that bit of silverware. Will that make an impact today? Will that give them the psychological boost they need to get over this horrible, horrible record they have against Manchester City in recent years? 15 games without a win against Manchester City in the league. 12 straight defeats. It doesn't really get much worse than that. So we'll talk about that in today's episode. We'll look at the latest fitness and really good news coming out about Bakaya Saka. Potentially some good news about Gabriel Martinelli as well being reported today. So I'll discuss that. I've got a few sort of comments from you guys, of course, at the end as well. Look at what Pep Guardiola has been saying about Declan Rice. All right, let's get stuck into it, shall we? Because I don't want to waste too much time because lots of you, like me, will be heading up to the game very, very soon. So let's get talking about Bakaya Saka. He's been the big talking point in the whole build-up to this game. Will he play? Won't he play? Is he fit? Will Arsenal risk him? Should England risk him? It's been a constant source of debate throughout the last few days. And the latest news here being reported by the brilliant Sammy Motbell at the Daily Mail is that um, Bakaya Saka did train yesterday. See his tweet here that he put out this morning. It said, in the midst of the Bakaya Saka, will he, should he play versus Manchester City but debate? Gabriel Martinelli has accelerated his recovery from a hamstring injury in the last 48 hours. Big boost if he is included in the squad for today's game. Saka trained on Sunday. He did, of course, then above that tweet, um, correct that to Saturday, not Sunday. No training session today, of course, on the day of the game. But Saka did train yesterday, which is a big, big boost to Arsenal. And I have to say, I've changed my mind now. All, all week, I've been sort of just accepting that Bakaya Saka is not going to play in this game. I think he plays now. I, I'm, I've, I've totally flipped. I think I'll be surprised now if he doesn't play. If he trained yesterday, as long as there was no you know, adverse reaction to him training yesterday, you know, and he hasn't woken up today feeling sore with his hamstring tight, you know, if he's absolutely nothing wrong or feels like there's nothing wrong, I think he starts. I'll be very surprised. It'll be a risk. Absolutely, it'll be a risk. And I'm going to be sitting there in my seat at the Emirates every time he goes bombing past me on the wing. My fingers crossed that that hamstring is all right. But, you know, as I said, I think he plays now. If the, if the doctors have cleared him, if he's had no um, adverse reaction to that training session yesterday, I'll be very surprised if he doesn't start in a game of this magnitude. Really good news there about Gabriel Martinelli. Whatever happens, I can't see Gabriel Martinelli coming straight into the starting lineup. You know, if... He is deemed fit enough to be part of the squad. I would fully expect him to be on the substitutes bench. I cannot imagine you'd suddenly throw Gabriel Martinelli into this game when he hasn't played since the draw at Everton, hasn't really trained at all. Um, you know, I'd be really surprised. I still think Leandro Trossard lines up on the left-hand side of this attack. But really good news for Arsenal. And you would hope, you know, if Gabriel Martinelli, then he's not going away with Brazil. He wasn't called up to their national team because of that injury. He can then spend the next two weeks at Colney, really, really getting himself ready to go. So when the... Premier League returns after the international break. Arsenal are going to have a fit and fully ready Gabriel Martinelli on their hands. And that is going to be a big, big boost going into the run into the up to Christmas with the Champions League and everything really kicking into gear. So that'd be a big boost. But yeah, good news about Bakaya Saka. As I said, sort of slightly nerve wracking news about Bakaya Saka. Let's have a quick few uh, look at some of your comments you've been sending in over the last 24 hours or so. Very split opinion, as is always the way, of course, when it comes to the internet. Um, Matt saying, very hard to assess the risk of playing uh, playing players because we don't have the medical advice. But if Saka is fit, he has to start because of his value to the team and the importance of the game. There is a clear ongoing problem of managing him a bit more carefully, but that means substituting him earlier rather than him not playing here. I agree with this. And this is why what I had to say as well Um in midweek ahead of the Champions League game. I think if he's deemed fit to start the game, I think he starts. I think where you've got to manage Bukayo Saka better is taking him off earlier in the game or picking and choosing matches. I don't see... If you're fit, if you've been cleared to play, I can't see how you can't play him against Manchester City and I can't see how you can't play him uh, in the Champions League because those games are, are that big. But you've just got to manage him better when it comes to... You know, if, say, Arsenal winning 2-0, which I doubt they're going to be today because it's Manchester City, but if they're comfortable 
with half an hour to go. Yeah, take Bakaya Saka off. Against Bournemouth last week, of course, when Arsenal go 3-0 up early in the second half, yeah, take Bakaya Saka off. Those are the opportunities you've got to take to give him you know, less minutes and to give him plenty of opportunity to recharge. But lots of people disagree. Look, uh, Saka should sit this one out, says Mass 29-1-3. Um, still Wave says Saka plays and scores. I hope that is proved to be correct. Uh, still Wave and then Dittadu down the bottom says Achilles and hamstring injuries are nothing to mess around with. This game doesn't make or break our season. Rest Saka. Yeah, look, I've been, I have been in that camp all week, which is like, if he ugh, you can't risk him, you can't risk him, you can't risk him. But I have to admit, now I've woken up on the day of the game and Arsenal, and it's like Arsenal Manchester City and Saka's been training. I've kind of completely <laughs> done an about turn and thought, yeah, yeah, let's play him. Sod it. Let's just throw him in, start, and hopefully he scores a goal and uh, and sets a couple up. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. I think we're all going to be sitting there now like this throughout this game, if, of course, he starts. And it is a big if. We don't know yet if that is going to be the case. But certainly good news coming out of the Arsenal camp this morning, as reported, of course, by Sammy Mottbell in the Daily Mail. All right, I thought I'd just talk about uh, Declan Rice. Big game for Declan Rice, of course, um, today. Could well have been playing on the opposite side of things if things had panned out a little bit differently in the summer. Manchester City very much in for the running for Declan Rice, bid for Declan Rice, wanted to sign him. Declan Rice didn't want to go. He wanted to come to Arsenal. He made that very, very clear, and Arsenal got their man. Guardiola's been talking about that failed pursuit of Declan Rice in the build-up to today's game. Some quotes here of what he's had to say. He says, everybody knows that we wanted him. He could play, not just when Rodri could not play, at the end, Arsenal pushed more and wanted him more. Maybe Mikel was more convincing than me or the club itself or the offer that they put forward that we could not, what we believed in that position, reach it because we uh, we thought of Josko Guardiol in that position and we could not afford it. We could afford it maybe less and maybe that's why. Um, not exactly the clearest of uh, explanations by Guardiol. I thought it was interesting where he says he could not just, he could play not just when Rodri could not play. So he's basically saying there that they could have played together. It wasn't a case of one or the other in the team. It was a case that he could play as well. And I think that kind of when I look ahead to today's game and why I feel like Thomas Partey and Declan Rice should be playing together, it's kind of similar to that. It's not a case of one or the other. I think they could play, both play in certain games to make that midfield really, really strong. And that's what I'm kind of hoping to see a little bit later on today. But the fact was, Arsenal were convincing. Mikel Arteta was more convincing. Mikel, um, Declan Rice has said it himself many a time about why he wanted to come to Arsenal. He just believed in what Arteta said and what he told him. And he felt like this was a club where he could really kick on. And look, he's been fantastic since he signed Declan Rice. Just absolute monster of a player. Really looking forward to seeing if he can completely stamp his authority on this midfield battle today without Rodri and really sort of wrestle control of the game away from Man City and really give Arsenal a foothold in, uh, in today's game. OK, predicted 11. This is what I'm going for. I'm predicting Mikel Arteta is going to do today. I would not be at all surprised if Party doesn't play. I wouldn't be, you know, if if Havertz lines up and it's Rice, Havertz, Odegaard, I wouldn't be surprised, put it that way. But I'm going this way and I'm kind of veering to this one more in the hope that he does this um, and that it might convince him to, not that he'll be watching this, but uh, David Raya, Back four pricks itself, really. White, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko. And then I'm going Party and Rice. Party, I think, would be the deeper lion player, more as the, the six receiving the ball. But I think Rice will be closer to him. Say if it was Party, Odegaard and Havertz, I think it would be more of the usual 4-3-3 formation we're used to with Arsenal, with, with Havertz as that kind of left eight or Vieira as a left eight. But I think if Rice and Party play, I think we'll see Rice slightly closer together to Party. He wouldn't be quite in that more advanced role. I think Odegaard will play more as a 10 than an 8, if you get my meaning. That's why I've kind of put the formation a little bit like this. Um, I don't, although I don't think Rice and Party are going to be absolutely next to each other. I think they'll be closer to each other. So, yeah, midfield three of Party, Rice, and Odegaard. And then I'm going Saka, Jesus, and Trossard. Look, if Saka is deemed not fit enough to start and is on the bench, and I've said before, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd prefer to see Jesus over on the right and then you know, Havertz or Enketia as the nine for me. But if Saka is deemed fit to start, then I think he comes in and Jesus plays in that number nine role with Odegaard just behind. So there's my predicted 11 for today. Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko, Party, Rice, Odegaard, Saka, Trossard, Jesus. To me, that looks like a very strong team. And if they're all fit, fingers crossed, 
uh, then I think that's a team that can really, really give Manchester City a good go today. When you look at Manchester City's predicted 11, this is from the Manchester Evening News. This was the 11 they've predicted that City will go with today. So Edison in goal, obviously, then a back four of Walker on the right, Diaz and Akanji as the centre-backs and Guardiola playing it as the left back. Didn't even realise he'd been playing that role um, recently, but I read it today that he has been. He's been doing very, very well. Kanji played there really well last season, uh, I thought, but it looks like Guardiola uh, is playing over on the left. And then they've gone the uh, with a kind of midfield two of Phillips as the holding role, Kovacic slightly ahead of him. And then Grealish on the left. I think Bernardo Silva comes in on the right. Haaland is the nine, obviously, and Alvarez playing just behind Haaland. So that's the predicted 11 that the Manchester Evening News have gone with for today's game. Edison, Walker, Diaz, Akanji, Guardiola, Phillips, Kovacic, Bernardo, uh, Grealish, Alvarez and Haaland. Strong team, no doubt about it. I think the midfield there, you look at that and think it's a real opportunity for Arsenal to try and dominate that game with Rice, with Partey, if they both play. Um, I think City will go pretty direct in this game. We've seen them have lots of success against Arsenal doing that. They did it in the second half of the Emirates last season and really turned the game in their favour doing that. And then they absolutely dominated the game in the Etihad, obviously, doing that. I expect they'll do some, or try and do something fairly similar today. I'm sure Mikel Arteta is expecting that. And it'll be interesting to see what sort of tactical tweaks he does to try and combat that this time because it really caused Arsenal problems in the last couple of games. OK, a few comments and questions from you guys before we wrap this up. Here's one from the real Nostradamus. It says, Manchester City will likely have 80% odd possession. Do you think playing Jorginho and Rice would be better suited to give him party an instant return and would would be lacking the off-the-ball awareness we may have with Havertz in the middle? Nelson and Jesus seem ideal for counters. Yeah, I was thinking about this. I still think he'll go party, Rice and Odegaard. But Jorginho would be a good shout for this. I wouldn't be totally stunned if he did this. I remember at the Etihad when Arsenal were awful last season, they brought Jorginho on it and they immediately improved. He got control of the ball. He stopped Man City absolutely dominating possession. I thought he made a really good impact in that game. He played well in the game uh, at the Emirates as well when he came in for his first start when Partey got injured just before it. So yeah, I think Jorginho would be a decent option in terms of controlling the game. Um, we've seen what he's done recently when he's, when he's played in that role and taking the Tottenham disaster out of it when he came off the bench and made that mistake but other than that he's been playing very very well when he started so yeah it wouldn't surprise me Mikel will absolutely trust him to play him in a game like this but I still think for me it's probably more likely to be um, Rice Party and Odegaard or Rice Havertz and Odegaard later on today this one just made me laugh because these were right next to each other literally on top of each other in the comment section and it just made me think Again, this is just the internet in a nutshell. <laughs> and it's, it's why it's great as well, because we've all got so many different opinions. Grind it out there saying, I'll take a draw. Then um, Kunu, oh, I'm going to get this wrong. Kunimitsunu177 says, a draw is a loss. And this was obviously, I was saying yesterday, I don't think a draw is going to be the worst result if Arsenal get this. Obviously, I want a win. 100% I want the win. But if it is a draw, given who it's against, given Arsenal's record against Manchester City, I don't think it'd be an absolute disaster. It wouldn't let City move away from Arsenal. But obviously, I'd want to win. But I certainly am not in the opinion of a draw would be a loss. You can't say a draw against Manchester City would be like a loss. It's just not the case, in uh, my opinion. You've got to have a little bit of perspective about who you're playing and the quality of team you are playing against. And I thought this was a nice way to end today before I quickly scoot off to uh, take my son to his drum lesson and then leg it down to the train to get up to North London for the match. Dominic Palmer, really lovely comment here, I thought. He said, apologies for a non-Arsenal comment, but best wishes to Chris Basham after that horror injury today. Now, that's obviously a response to the Sheffield United-Fulham game yesterday when Chris Basham, horrendous-looking leg injury. Um, I'm sure you've all seen the pictures, and if you haven't, I wouldn't search for them because they're not very nice, very graphic. Um, just trying to cross the ball in from the right-hand side, not even a tackle, just all his weight on the wrong side, kind of miscued the ball and... You know, we all saw the pictures, as I said, and what's happened with his leg and just horrible for any professional footballer. We've all seen it happen to Arsenal players before and it's a really horrible, horrible thing to witness. And the Fulham fans were great. I thought yesterday we showed a lot of class. They immediately called the referee over. They could see how serious it was, the ones who were all around him. They gave him a really good ovation as he went off. It was nice to see Chris Basham, you know, put his thumb up in the air and thank the Fulham fans as he was going off on the stretcher with the oxygen strapped to his face. Um, but yeah, obviously he's facing up to one hell of a recovery process now and fingers crossed that goes well and he does get back playing football again sooner rather than later. So yeah, really nice comment there, Dominic. Thank you very much for sending that in and best wishes to Chris Basham 
of course. All right, that is it from me today, everyone. Thank you very much for watching or listening to this on your way up to the game. Maybe if you're listening to it for some pre-match audio, if you are going, be loud. We need a hell of an atmosphere at the Emirates today. I cannot wait to get up there and partake in that. I'll be sitting there with, next to my dad, as usual, sitting by the away fans. So if you see me, if you bump into me in and around the stadium, come and say hello. Come and have a drink, maybe, because I'll be certainly having a drink below in the concourse at some point before the game. Um, and yeah, enjoy it. Be loud. And if you're watching it anywhere else around the world, then fingers crossed you will get a very good game to witness. Thank you very much for watching. Everyone do have a very good Sunday. We'll be back tomorrow, hopefully, fingers crossed, to discuss one hell of an Arsenal victory. Speak to you soon. Thank you.